If you want to get optimal performance out of your subwoofer or subwoofers in a car audio application, it is critical that you choose the right amplifier. But what features do we need to look for? How do we properly match power ratings? And what is all this talk of impedance and ohms? Hey everyone, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. If you're new here, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. So first off, this video is going to assume that you've already selected a subwoofer model and a quantity of subwoofers that you plan to use. So if you don't have a subwoofer picked out yet, be sure to go watch my do's and don'ts of picking a subwoofer video and then be sure to come back to this one. Now to best explain how we can go about choosing an amplifier to power our subwoofer, I think that it makes sense to have an example, which in this case we're going to be using the Gladen Audio RSX-10. If you are looking for tight, accurate bass without the need for a large enclosure, the RSX line is a solid choice. I recently made a video about a demo vehicle built by some of my friends that featured 13 RSX-8s in a sealed enclosure that sounded amazing. This sub is available as a 6.5, 8-inch, 10-inch, 12-inch, and also slim 8s and 10s. If you'd like to learn more about this line of subwoofers, be sure to check out our show sponsor, Gladen Audio America, at the link down in the video description. So our first consideration for what amplifier to get to power our subwoofer is amplifier type. Now, if the only upgrade that you intend to make is adding a subwoofer, you're going to want to look for what is called a mono block or a mono amplifier. These amplifiers have just one channel of powered output, but don't let that confuse you. Even though you only have one channel on the amplifier, you can connect as many subwoofers as you would like, as long as the impedance load is correct, and we'll talk about that later. In fact, for most applications, you're going to want your subwoofer to have a mono signal that sums the left and right signal, which is what a mono amplifier does. Long story short, avoid the confusion up front. Let's say that you're running two subwoofers. That doesn't mean that you need a two channel amplifier. You can power two subwoofers with a mono amplifier. Now, of course, that can change if you're doing a more complex system, but since you're tuning into this video, I'm guessing that you're looking for a more simple upgrade. So that is what we're gonna focus on. Another amplifier consideration to make when it comes to type of amplifier is if you are planning on powering the speakers in the vehicle with your aftermarket amplifier, you may wanna consider what is called a full system amplifier. An example of this would be a five channel amp. With a five channel amplifier, the first four channels are going to power your speakers where you do in fact need that channel separation because you want to have a left signal and a right signal and you might also want a signal from front to rear or you might want to do bandwidth limited channels if you were running active, which would mean you would power tweeters off channels one and two and then the larger mid-range drivers off channels three and four. The point is that with a five channel amplifier, you do once again get that mono channel, which is going to be that fifth channel that you can use to power your subwoofer. And again, on a multi-channel amplifier, that subwoofer channel can be used to power as many subwoofers as you would like, as long as the impedance is correct, which we'll talk about later. The next big amplifier consideration that you need to make when picking an amplifier for your subwoofer is one that has a lot of misconceptions about it, and that is picking the correct power rating. So first off, we need to find the RMS power rating of our subwoofer, and we want to avoid any listing of a max wattage power. We want to focus on RMS power or constant power. This is the continuous power that the subwoofer can handle in watts. In this case, if I look at the manual for the RSX-10, they actually provide a range in this case. I'm looking for 300 up to 450 watts RMS. Now, if we had multiple subwoofers, we simply multiply the quantity of subwoofers by that power rating. So as an example, if we take that 450 watt value and let's say that we had two of the RSX-10s, we'd multiply it by two. That means that we're going to look for an amplifier with 900 watts RMS. RMS. Now, a quick side note here, I really like when manufacturers provide a power range for that RMS power. When manufacturers provide a single value, unfortunately, I think there's a misconception out there that a lot of people believe that you have to provide that exact power amount to the subwoofer in order to achieve good results. And that is not the case. So let's expand on that a little bit. If you're planning on competing with your subwoofer setup, yes, in that case, you're most likely going to want to get the best performance you 
possibly can out of the subwoofer. But you may be wondering what level of performance decrease would there be by using a slightly less powerful amp? Well, it's likely not as big a deal as you might think. A common misconception is that if you simply double the power going to a subwoofer that it's going to sound twice as loud. So as an example, just using easy numbers, let's say that you have a subwoofer that is rated at a thousand watts RMS. One might think that if you power that subwoofer with a 500 watt amplifier and measure the performance, and then power it with an 1000 watt amplifier and measure the performance, that that second measurement would be twice as loud, but that is not the case. In order for our hearing to interpret something as being twice as loud, it actually needs to have a sound pressure level that increases by 10 dB. But in our example, with everything else remaining constant, where we change from 500 watts to 1000 watts, we would actually only measure an increase of about 3 dB. Anytime that we double the power, we would go up by 3 dB, and anytime we have the power, we would go down by approximately 3 dB. So knowing that doubling the power only achieves a 3 dB change, let's look at a real world example. Like we said, this subwoofer is rated for up to 450 watts RMS. But let's say that I find this amplifier that will power it with 360 watts RMS. So that's a 90 watts difference. Am I missing a ton of performance? Not really. When you run the math, it would really only achieve about a one dB change. So the next question becomes, can you hear that one decibel difference? Well, let's try it out. Tell me which one is louder. Is it this one? Or is it this one? Those two tones that I just played are only one dB different and extremely difficult to differentiate. Moral of the story, when you're picking an amplifier to power your subwoofer, you do wanna be within the correct power range, but you don't have to be concerned with providing that exact high value. Now the next consideration we need to make for picking an amplifier actually relies upon the design of the subwoofer. We need to consider the subwoofer's voice coils. Subwoofers generally come in either a single or dual voice coil style. Each voice coil has an impedance or an ohm load and that helps determine what amount of power our amplifier can actually provide to the subwoofer. Amplifiers are typically rated at 4 ohms and 2 ohms and sometimes you will also find them rated at 1 ohm. If you don't see a 1 ohm rating, you shouldn't run that amplifier at 1 ohms. 2 ohms in that case is likely the lowest you can go. So in our situation here, you've already picked your subwoofer, so that's going to help us determine what amplifier we should get. If your subwoofer has a single voice coil, that means that you're only going to see one pair of connections. So one positive connection and one negative. A dual voice coil subwoofer would have two positive connections and two negative connections. Now, if you do want to explore what voice coil options that you should be choosing when you pick a subwoofer, I have a full video about that that you guys can check out here on the channel. In our example here, we have a single voice coil subwoofer and the impedance is right here, four ohms. So for our example, when it comes to picking the correct power for the subwoofer, we want to look at that four ohm rating. If this was a two ohm voice coil, we'd want to look at the two ohm ratings. And just as a quick side note, with almost all amplifiers, as you go down in impedance, you're going to increase the power output of the amplifier, which is an advantage of picking the right ohm load on your voice coils from the start. Now, what if this subwoofer is a dual voice coil subwoofer or what if I have multiple subwoofers? Well, then the wiring becomes more complex. Now to avoid adding a ton of time to this video explaining how to calculate all the different wiring options, what I would recommend if you're new to this is that you check out Crutchfield's tech article that I'll link for you guys down in the video description that goes more into detail on all the different subwoofer configurations for wiring. So once you've determined the impedance that you can wire your subwoofer or subwoofers to, you can use that to correctly match the power rating. But I do have a quick side note just because we can get more power out of an amplifier at a lower impedance doesn't mean that we have to. In our example here, if we were using this 4 ohm single voice coil subwoofer with this amplifier here on screen, this would still be a good choice for match of amplifier even though we aren't using it at that 2 ohm value. And that's because we aren't driving this amplifier as hard, which can be advantageous for the reliability and longevity of the system. Now there are some other amplifier features that you're definitely going to want to look for when you're 
picking out an amplifier to power your sub. Now these features I'm going to talk about are very common on monoblock amplifiers and full system amplifiers, but it still doesn't hurt to look for them. And the first one is a low pass filter. You don't want your subwoofer playing mids and highs. You only want to send it the base range of frequencies and a low pass filter allows you to do that. Like I said, almost every subwoofer amplifier in existence is going to have that, but a less common feature that you're going to want to look for is what's called a subsonic or infrasonic filter. An infrasonic filter is actually a kind of high pass filter that limits bass below a certain point. So why would you want to do that? Why would you want to potentially cut off some of the low notes? Well, you'd want to potentially use that for a ported subwoofer application. It's not as needed for a sealed subwoofer application, but for ported, it's oftentimes a must. And if you guys want to see more details on exactly where to set that along with tuning the rest of the amplifier, definitely be sure to check out my related video for that. It's worth noting that the subsonic or infrasonic filter isn't always necessarily a dial. Sometimes it's just a switch that turns on or off at an exact particular frequency, but either way, something to keep an eye out for. So there we have it, guys. Again, if you'd like to learn more about the RSX line of subwoofers from our show sponsor, Gladen Audio America, check out the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them, along with Jerry and the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible, and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.